بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد وما يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear sisters, my dear daughters Welcome back to a new episode in uh, Asma Allah al-Husna And at the beginning I would like to congratulate, congratulate you with these uh, blessed days of the first of the Hijjah uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, our uh, good deeds and reward us inshallah with the Jannah All of us and all the Muslim uh, these days, my dear sisters, are very precious and uh, the Ajr is uh, multiplied, uh, many multipliers uh, during the, any good deed we are doing this during these days. So I advise myself and advise you to increase from the uh, dhikr, from the uh, prayer during night, from the fasting if you can, from the charity. Um, even from the uh, making a good connections with your relatives and uh, kinship, this is very uh, will be very inshallah good things to do in these uh, days. And of course, the top of this will be Yawm Arafat, which will be inshallah going to be next uh, Thursday. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to give us all the reward, inshallah. Uh, today, inshallah, in our episode, we have two uh, majestic names uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are uh, related to each other. And even when they, they came in Quran, they came with, with each other. Uh, and uh, inshallah, I hope that all of us to get benefit of uh, uh, to know more and more about uh, these two names. And as usual, we are beginning with our uh, hadith uh, sent for us from Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam telling us about the uh, beautiful names of Allah. Uh, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, really Allah has 99 names, 100 but one, whoever knows each and every one of them. And we said, uh, knows means, means believes in them and works according to them, uh, will enter the paradise. So uh, today, inshallah, the first name is Al-Qawi. Al-Qawi. All uh, the all strong, the all strong. Now, when you go to when we go to the meaning, the meanings of uh, the name of Allah Al Qawi, the all strong. Uh, the all strong is he is the all powerful to whom perfect power belongs, and his commands are carried out. Uh, the power here, when we are speaking about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should may, we should usually uh, think about it in the uh, meanings of the ayah, laysa kamithlihi shay, nothing is comparable to him. So when we are talking about the power, we mean the perfect power. The perfect power is belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is never overpowered. His decree can't be averted. And whatever he decrees certainly takes place. Uh, and this is from all the power, the perfect power, that the decree of Allah cannot be averted. This is another uh, meaning of uh, the name. Uh, he gives assistance and support to the believers, uh, supporting them and br bring for them the victory. Uh, and on the other uh, side, severely punishes those who disbelieve his signs and arrogantly turn away from declaring his ones. So the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, all powerful, is uh, what we need to know is that this power is a perfect power, is the uh, unlimited power uh, for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No one can overpower Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and His commands to be done. Uh, if He wants uh, a commandments, is a qada amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kum fa yakun. Uh, whenever he wants a decree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is this decree will become true, will become true. And uh, again, with his power, he will support and bring victory to the believers and the one who are uh, defending of the religion. And uh, on the other side, with his uh, power, he will punish uh, the disbeliever and uh, make them and those who are turning away from him. Uh, the name of Allah Al-Qawi came in Quran nine times 
And uh, it was um, something very beautiful that we found that from these nine times, seven times the name of al qawi is, is associated with the name of Allah Al-Aziz, the Almighty. Uh, remember at the beginning of our uh, episodes, we had uh, the name of Allah Al-Aziz. So uh, in seven times, it, the name of Allah Al-Qawi is associated with the name of Allah Al-Aziz. And in uh, just two, uh, in two uh, parts or two times, uh, came uh, the name of Allah Al-Aziz with, uh, uh, the, with the severe punishment. The other Allah with the Al-Qawi uh, with the severe punishment. So we're going to have uh, these ayat just to know the relation and the meanings, as we mentioned before, that when we are trying to know more and more about the meaning and how to know the name of Allah uh, Al-Qawi from the Quran is by uh, knowing the different ayat and, and, diff and different verses that Allah bring uh, his name Al-Qawi in them. So we have the first example in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 74, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ma qadaru Allah haqqa qadrihi, inna Allah laqawiyun aziz. They haven't respected Allah with the respect due to, due, to, due to him. Indeed, Allah is certainly all powerful, all mighty. So here, as we mentioned, that the name of Allah al-Aziz is came, uh, came with all powerful or, or all strong. So why here? As you can remember uh, from our episode in Al-Aziz, we said that Al-Aziz is the one who is over uh, controlling, over controlling everything and he is very uh, precious and uh, very difficult to be, uh, to, to can reach, no one can reach. Uh, this is all came to the meaning of Al-Aziz. So when we are speaking about Al-Qawai with the all powerful, and the old strong with the perfect power, unlimited power came with the very precious and uh, uh, it's uh, impossible to encompass or to figure out and uh, over controlling Al-Aziz, all these are the means of the, uh, of the uh, Al-Aziz. So they are uh, actually complementary together. They are two names complementary of the attributes of Allah in Al-Qawi Al-Aziz. Here in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the disbelievers and who and those who are not believing in the presence of a creator or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they are not having, showing respectful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created all this universe and all these ayat and verses in front of their eyes. And at the end, they uh, deny all this. This is uh, as, uh, considered to be as a disrespect disrespect to the creator who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, also in Surah Al-Hajj, in Surah Al-Hajj, the same Surah in Ayah 40, الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ لَا دَفْعُوا اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيَعْ صوامع وبيع وصلوات ومساجد يذكر فيها اسم الله كثيرا. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in this uh, ayah say those who have been unjustifiably evicted from their homes merely for saying our Lord is Allah and were it not that Allah rebels people by means, by, by means of others monasteries and churches and synagogue and mosques where the name of Allah is mentioned frequently would have been utterly demolished. And most surely Allah will support whoever supports him. Indeed, Allah is certainly all powerful, almighty. Again, here the two names came together when Allah uh, is here speaking about uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the battle that is usually happening uh, from uh, Prophet Adam till the end of uh, this uh, the Yawm uh, Al-Qiyamah, the battle between the right and wrong, the believers and disbelievers. Those we have, the, they have the religion and those are, uh, they are arrogantly and they just want to make corruption in the earth. So this is the Sunnah Allahi Fi Khalqi, Sunnah Allahi Fi Khalqi, which means it is uh, the, path, the, the path of the lives that Allah decreed 
that uh, there is always will be a battle or challenges or competition between those uh, the, the believers and they really trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in him and those on the other side the disbelievers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his power and by his mighty all might and the all uh, strong uh, all power names will help will support those believers in their battle and their make and they give them the victory uh, at the end uh, even even if uh, uh, times of uh, defeated comes or pass through the believers but at the end it is a final promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the all powerful the almighty for those believers that he will uh, help them we have also another ayah uh, number 19 in surah ashura Allah latifun bi'ibadihi yarzuq man yasha wa huwa alqawi alaziz Allah is subtle with his servants he gives a provision to whom he wills and he is the all powerful the exalted in might again uh, here we have another name came in this ayah which is, who is al latif the subtle and we said about this name last lesson uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, it, it was a various means of such a name that Allah how Allah is knowing the hidden things and what's in yourself and from the meanings of such name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting the provision at the perfect and at the right time so here the meaning of granting the provision for uh, the his servants came with uh, the two names the all powerful and the all might this is Ashur it is a sure promise from Allah uh, like a covenant from Allah that uh, he will grant the provision at the proper time for his uh, for his uh, believers and for his slaves uh, where, whoever he wants to bring and he can he can do that uh, because why he can do that surely he will do that because he is the all power and the all might all powerful and all might um, I just want you to, yani, I want you, inshallah, after that, uh, after each episode, if you can uh, read the Quran uh, with the ayat, uh, like we are mentioning. For example, if you take to today uh, names of Allah al qawi al Mateen, I would like to go through the ayat having such names and try to bond this ayat and try to understand the meaning in the frame of uh, the names of Allah. Actually, it will give you a very, um, a very uh, pleasant sensation that you are having a new view and a new angle of uh, how to understand the meanings of the verse. Then we have another ayah in Surah Al-Mujadila. كتب الله لأغلبنا أنا ورسلي إن الله قوي عزيز. Allah has written, I will surely overcome. I and my messengers. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in might. Here again, actually, it's a very uh, frank uh, covenant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely, he will overcome. And this is what we said in the meaning of the all-powerful. And even the meaning of the uh, Al-Aziz, the Almighty, the over-control and over overpower. They came together at the end of the ayah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making uh, like a qasam or a swear or an oath. I will surely overcome I and my messengers, which came all for the uh, confirmation of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the, the, to the victory uh, for his uh, believers. Again, we have another ayah. Uh, we now will come to the two, uh, two ayahs related to the punishment. The severe punishment came with the name of Allah, the All-Powerful. In Surah Ghafir, Ayah 22, that was because their messengers were coming to them with clear proofs, but they disbelieved. So Allah seized them. Indeed, He is powerful and severe in punishment. And of course, here we can imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking here about the uh, disbelievers that uh, they denied their, the Allah messengers uh, and, uh, and all the proof they came with uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, giving them the threatening that they are at the day of restriction they will be have severe punishment from Allah and this is very uh, suitable, very suitable to come with it the name of Allah all powerful to see 
you can uh, imagine how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he, with his perfect power and unlimited uh, power is uh, talking about the punishment. You can see how the punishment will be severe, how it will be painful. Uh, again, it came in Surah Al-Anfal in Ayah 52. كَدَأْ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَوِيٌّ شديد العقاب. Such, uh, such was the case with Pharaoh's folk and those before them. They denied the signs of Allah. So Allah sees them for their misdeeds. Indeed, Allah is all powerful, stern in retribution. Uh, again, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, an, another types of the uh, disbelievers like Fir'aun and his soldiers and his supporters, how they denied the signs of Allah came by Prophet Musa and uh, they uh, uh, tried to kill even uh, the believers and uh, Prophet Musa, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he uh, saved them and um, uh, also make severe punishment uh, for uh, Fir'aun during the hereafter. He already drowned in the, uh, he, the life here in the dunya, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in the day of resurrection or during the day of, resur of resurrection, how the punishment will be severe. And again, uh, the punishment here is related to the name of Allah al qawi or the all uh, powerful, all strong. Now we come to the benefits. Uh, of the name of Allah al qawi If I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have uh, the perfect power or has the perfect power and unlimited power and he is having all the power and nobody, no one can overcome him. If I'm going to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when are you going to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his name al qawi When you are in the depths of helplessness, when you feel that you are overpowered, when you feel that you are unsafe, so I will call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Qawi. Allah al-Qawi, he will support me. Allah al-Qawi will bring the victory to me. Allah al-Qawi will, will make me, uh, uh, can overcome all the problems and all the uh, hardship I can pass through. Uh, another point uh, from the, uh, the benefits, uh, you may not be powerful yourself, but are made powerful because your protector is the most powerful. So this is another meaning. Uh, if I'm going to ask myself uh, if I have any hardship, how I can pass through the hardship? I'm very weak. And this actually happened to all of us. I, 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 I'm sure of that. If any one of us remembered during her life, uh, um, as, I, I, just a simple circumstances she was put in, and she at one moment she felt that she is very weak, and helpless and she cannot do what, anything and subhanallah uh, the, the victory came from Allah and the support came from Allah and all the huge and the mountains of the grief and the sadness she has it suddenly vanished it suddenly demolished by the entrance of al qawi uh, this is the feelings this is the feeling my sister uh, the feeling that you are not strong by yourself but you are strong because of uh, uh, the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you when you turn to him sincerely with, devo with devotion and asking him the help and support. Uh, another point that relying on the most powerful also means doing uh, our due diligence, means that I have to do my duties, I have to do what I can, uh, I have to take with the causes of the life, and then after that, I will depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-powerful, that he will give me the power, uh, the all-power. But I have to do my, uh, uh, my duties. I have to do my, what I have to do. Because uh, if I just left my house open with open door and say no, uh, no thief will come and I'm sure Allah, the, the all-powerful, will support and to bring victory to me, no. It will not be like I should take care, I should close the windows, I should close the door. Uh, and after that, I will make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me, to help me. So the diligence is important uh, when you are going to uh, call for the all powerful to help you. Uh, another point, trusting the most powerful make you feel pleased and supported. And this is a very interesting and very beautiful 
pretty feelings, my dear sisters. When you feel that you are supported by Allah, and Allah supported you uh, in certain circumstances when you, when you feel, felt at that time that all the world against you, but suddenly it opens the door and you felt that uh, all powerful came and helped you. This is a very uh, pleasant feeling. And this is uh, what happened. And we, we can also uh, having two striking examples about this in our prophets, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, the uh, very critical moment when he uh, uh, get out from Mecca uh, during the way to uh, of the Hijra to Al Madina Al Munawwara, and he was uh, uh, present in the cave of uh, Thawr with his uh, dearest friend Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiAllahu anhu arda. And uh, the disbelievers were uh, in a mess. There were all. Um, in rage of anger because how they could have been, how he could have been um, ran away from them and he couldn't, they couldn't uh, catch him as they are, they wish to do. And when they reached this cave, actually cave of Thaw, uh, prof, uh, the, uh, the prophet friend uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq was very anxious and he was frightened, not on himself, he was frightened about Prophet Muhammad because at that time, they are just near, they just in front of them in, uh, to the degree that he told him, oh, oh messenger of Allah, if they just bowed, uh, they could see us. Just bowing, they can see us if they just uh, lower their head. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give the support at that time, at that critical time to Prophet Muhammad and he told him, how, are you, uh, how could you think about two, the third of them are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he gave uh, the uh, sureness and the calmness and serenity to uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep them safe, both of them. Uh, how he could have that? How he could have that Prophet Muhammad? Because he was depending on the all-powerful. He knows that the all-powerful will, will support him at that critical time. The same happened with Prophet Musa at a very critical moment also when he took the children of Israel and they tried to cross the Red Sea, uh, but they couldn't do and they, don't, they didn't have any ships or any, any equipment to help them. And at the same time, Pharaoh and his soldiers are coming behind them. What they will do? So they told him, Musa, they will catch us. There is no, no escape. So what happened? Prophet Musa said, no. He said, surely, no. My Lord with me and he will protect us. Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdi. No, my Lord is with us and he will protect me and protect us. And this is what happened. And then the, uh, the sea beca became, there is a uh, uh, road between the uh, sea and he can cross to the other side. So this, this moments, critical moments, we are, when we are reading in the story of the prophets, we can feel, we can feel how the all-powerful uh, is present at such moments. Another uh, point to know your strengths and opportunities and work on it. This is very important. Uh, in the uh, courses, uh, uh, in the courses done for the personal developments, there is something called thought analysis. Thought analysis is the uh, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threat. It is the uh, these uh, four letters S W O T stand for the uh, strength, weakness, uh, opportunities, and the threat. What this? It is like a, a table where each person have this table and write his. Uh, strength points one to three and in other in other uh, square of the table he will write his opportunities that he have and, uh, and uh, the other uh, uh, in the row number two of the table one square he write his weakness and in the opposite uh, square he will write what uh, is the threat he has and the aim of this thought analysis is to know your strength point each one of us if he just try to bring for you daughters, for your sister, if you bring a paper and pencil and start to write what's my strength, what I am good in, one, two, three, what opportunities I can have to uh, grow these strengths, uh, or this strength point, how I can grow my uh, talents, my skills, 
And again, the weakness, what I am weak in, how I could improve this weakness, and what is the threat, what I'm afraid of, how I demolish this afraid, like those who are having the claustro, the afraid from dogs, uh, how they can face this um, uh, fear or phobias from dogs that they have to walk with the dogs. They, they have the dogs and uh, dogs around, they should have walks beside them. At that time, they will feel by time, training once, twice, thrice, then they find themselves, okay, I can, I, I'm not afraid anymore. So this is what we call. So if you work on your strengths and know what's your strengths point and what's opportunities you can find and work on that, this is one of the benefits that help us in uh, the name of Allah, al qawi Because according to the hadith sahih by Prophet Muhammad, al-mu'min al-qawi khayrun wa ahabu min Allah, عند Allah, al-mu'min al-da'if wa fi kullin khay, which means that the strong believer is uh, more uh, uh, good, yani it's better and more loved by Allah than the weak disbeliever. And both of them are good. But Allah loves more and better more for him is the, the strong, the strong believer. Uh, again, um, now another point is to show your strengths when you need it. This is very important. What does it mean? Um, I would like to take this point for my daughters to tell them about, uh, I would like them to, uh, I know that most of them are doing sports, but uh, I uh, recommend for them the sports, uh, the defensive sports like karate, like kung fu or that, such types of sports, uh, how to defend yourself. Because if you are in critical uh, situation, you have to know how to defend yourself. So this is an example. Uh, the physical stre strength, if you, if you need to show your, phys your physical strength, if you are in a threat or some, someone is trying to harm you, you have to show him his, your, your strength at that time. Uh, strength is not only physical, strength can be uh, um, how to present, how to talk about Islam, uh, how to invite us for Islam, uh, if, you, if you have uh, the, the, the way of conversation, you are liked by people, uh, you have a good way of explanation, work on that and show it when you need it. When you need it, if you say, if you, if you, for example, see someone who has, who is telling bad words about Islam or trying to um, make uh, some black propaganda and you are here, don't stay, don't stay quiet. Don't stay quiet. If you can defend, go on and defend uh, Islam. This is another strength point. So when you need it. When you need, this is very important also. If you have your strengths, you have to show it at the proper time. Uh, for example, my, dear, my girls, if, if you know karate or something, you will not go and beat the people all around. You will just, you will defend yourself only. Just um, remember that. Uh, and of course, the other point is to help others if you strong enough in their asking aspects. Anyone can, uh, you are, as we mentioned, you can help him if you have any um, strong point in your work, in your relation, uh, or in recommendations. This will uh, help others. Okay, of course, they have to uh, help others when seek your help. Now we come to the related story of the name of Allah, all powerful, uh, the battle of Badr. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, saying in uh, Quran, in uh, Surah Al-Amran about the battle of Badr and already had Allah given you victory at the battle of Badr while you were few in number. Then fear Allah, perhaps you will be grateful. Uh, actually the battle of Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name all powerful uh, bring, uh, he brought the victory and uh, complete support to the Muslims at that time. Actually, the Battle of Badr was a very critical uh, battle and it was the first real battle between the uh, disbelievers of Mecca and uh, Muslims after Prophet Muhammad left, uh, left Mecca by two years after the Hijra and what happened, uh, he started to have a new uh, Muslim army and uh, try to build, build the military forces at that time in Medina. And uh, the actual battle, uh, the first actual battle was Badr. And Badr was critical for many reasons. 
the first reason that the Muslims, this is was the first test for them, uh, they can, for showing their uh, power and showing their strength. Are they are comparable with uh, uh, disbelievers or still they are weak? Because if you're going to take a background of the uh, disbelievers before coming to this battle, uh, they were all thinking about uh, Prophet Muhammad that all the weak people with him since the first who believe in Prophet Muhammad was uh, uh, those who are slaves and the weak people uh, the rich people and the businessmen was not that much and in uh, it, it was just uh, countable on the one hand maybe three or four like Omar ibn Khattab like uh, Hamza his uncle at the strong he was a very strong man uh, but most of the people, they thought, the disbelievers, that they are weak. They cannot uh, be comparable to the army of the disbelievers. This is number one. Number two, the number, the number of the disbelievers army was around 1,000, 1,000 soldiers. Regarding to the Muslims at that time, uh, the, the, the count or the number of the army was around 300, 300 uh, only Muslims. And despite of that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, brought the victory, a uh, great victory actually, uh, to the uh, Muslims at that day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent angels, 3,000. 3,000 angels came to uh, fight with the Muslim soldiers uh, until the um, victory at the end was uh, for the Muslims. So here, what happens? Prophet Muhammad was making a dua and the Muslims were making a dua. They were come with devotion, with sincerely to Allah. Uh, if you're going to, uh, to uh, try to calculate it reasonably or calculate it by paper and pen, uh, if you have two armies, 1,000 and one, the other is 300. So by, the, by our minds, yes, the 1,000, of course, will take it easy and will be the winners. But this is, doesn't happen because Allah, the all-powerful, was there. Why was there? Because of the uh, proper niyyah and uh, the proper intention uh, for all of the companion at that time and Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and this is a great lesson for all of us. Now we came to uh, the second name who is uh, very firm, uh, very firm and very attached to al qawi the firm, which is Al-Mateen. Ismullah, the name of Allah, Al-Mateen, or the firm. What is the meaning of Al-Mateen, or the firm? The firm and steadfast. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said in his name, all powerful, all strong, that his perfect power is always uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly firm. Here is the two meanings is coming to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to attach it to each other. We are saying that the perfect power, this perfect power should be perfectly firm. What does it mean, perfectly firm? means it will not have uh, periods of weakness or changes. Because maybe I have the all-powerful, but it's not uh, all the time. We have a king, uh, a king that, uh, king, kingdoms or the kings that stay for 100 years. They are very strong, having firm authority about all the kingdom they have, and then after 100 years or 200, what happened? The, usually it, it happens that he died or become weakness at the, the time, weakness, and then a new kingdom came back, and this is the history. If you go through the history, you will find people came, people down, people up, people down, all that time, uh, all the time. So here, the name of Allah Al-Mateen is very important to be attached with name of Allah, all powerful, that this power will be stayed firm, perfectly firm, without weakness or changes. Another meaning of the firm is uh, that Allah power is uh, firmness is highly, is ultimately higher and advanced than, any th than anything else. This is another meaning of the firm, it's ultimately higher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mateen doesn't need help or support. He is the all-powerful. Do what he will and everything exists by his decree. This is uh, from the meaning. His power is indefinite and his power firmness 
firmness unlimited. And this is, I think, that what we have to put in our minds to try to attach the two names together. That the power, the all powerful, the since the power of Allah is indefinite, and the power firmness, we said there must be firmness just to be uh, sure that this power will not be weak at one second or one minute and will not change. Even this firmness will be unlimited, unlimited, affect everything and not affected by anything. Actually, uh, the two names came together in one ayah only in Quran, in uh, ayah 58 of Surah Al Dhariyat. Uh, indeed, it is Allah who is the continual provider, Razzaq, the firm possessor of strength. Thu al al -masin. The firm possessor, possessor thu uh, of strength, al quwa firm is al -masin. So, firm possessor of strength, see how much they are attached together. I said firm possessor of, of, of strength. Not only possessor of, of strength, it is a firm possessor of strength to meaning how much accurate the meaning goes to our mind. Uh, now to the benefits. The benefits of name of Allah Al-Mateen. Again, uh, to call Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala when we feel um, that uh, weak and uh, we cannot uh, be firm in certain uh, circumstances, I call Allah subhanahu by his name al qawiyul Al-Mateen al -Qawiy to give me power, Al-Mateen to stead, to stead fast and to uh, uh, be firm on that uh, on that matter I wish to overcome. So to call him by his name. Another point, when you feel that you can't be stead fast, hold on with the Mateen. Name Allah Al-Mateen, so you do not slip. Remember that we are commanded to stand for justice. Allah is al mateen to remind us that when we feel weak, we can hold on to him to stay firm and stay fast. Allah plan is firm. This is another ayah came with the meaning of firmness or al mateen in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah 183, and I will give them time, I will give them period of time, waiting time, those, of course, for the disbelievers. Uh, indeed, my plan is firm. My plan for them, for the disbeliever, is firm. Firm, it means it will not change it. It will not be weak. What is Allah's plan? When the word gets too hard to bear and to see and to hear the stories of injustice and pain, remember this verse. No one will escape from, his, from Allah's justice. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gives everyone time and gives everyone opportunity to turn back. But if people persist with injustice, they will not escape the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will ultimately be brought to justice. No one, no matter how untouchable they might seem in this world, will escape the plan of Allah. So the plan of Allah for those disbelievers, although they might not be seen by our eyes, their punishments, even in this dunya or in this life, but Allah is from his uh, justice that giving them the chance, giving them a waiting period just for repentance. Maybe they return back. Maybe they discover that they are wrong. But if they took this waiting time and they just uh, lost the chance, so at that time in the hereafter or in during the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when Allah punished them with his severe painful punishment, this is the complete justice. This is the old justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the plan here is uh, the plan of Allah which is firm, which will never, which will never be changed. It will never be changed because uh, someone having money or someone is uh, belonging to, uh, for example, Prophet Muhammad's uh, relatives, or like this. No, Prophet Muhammad himself said, said that no one will uh, go by his deeds to the uh, paradise except a mercy from Allah. And he said to his daughter, beloved daughter Fatima Zahra, I will not prevent uh, any punishment come to you if you mislead or if you did a bad deed although he, he he is her father 
and he is the last prophet and how Allah loves him and he is the best of the creation for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but although that he told her his daughter his beloved daughter that if you did something bad I cannot gain you or guarantee that I can uh, uh, guarantee for you paradise you have to work on yourself to have to make your own good deeds this is very important it is the complete and ultimate justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because uh, if you're going to see in our life sometimes if you have a job opportunity in one of the company and they have the uh, announcement about this job you'll find someone who is not qualified at all taken to this job why because he uh, one of his relatives know the manager of this company so jesus talked to him and maybe he bring him gifts or whatever so being taken this is completely injustice and this has happened a lot so we can see, uh, see everywhere but at the day of resurrection or yawm al qiyamah no everyone what he did he will see what did good he will take his book from the right hand did bad he will take the book from the left hand uh, this and this is very important to be understood now finally we came to um, the related story the related story to the name of Allah al mateen or the firm is about Prophet Muhammad our beloved our beloved Prophet Muhammad uh, I advise you my dears to try to read about the story of Prophet Muhammad it's actually full of um, lessons and full of uh, something that we can add to our personality and add to our life because actually he's our role model and this is what i'm always saying if you are do if you are searching especially our daughters beloved daughters if you are searching for a role model this the role model is prophet muhammad you will find everything everything in his life and how he lived his life for the sake of allah and in the obedience of allah and at the same time he was living like any other man human uh, mankind he was he was not uh, having it he was not living in a uh, masjid all the time 24 hours no we can see that he is doing lots of lots of things yeah. so when we have a uh, one um, uh, circumstance or one uh, thing happened to prophet muhammad related to our uh, name of allah al mateen we'll find that uh, Prophet Muhammad was very firm in his uh, message and from day one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to uh, convey the message of Allah and to invite people to Islam he uh, obeyed and he did whatever he can for the sake of the da'wah and for the invitation and um, the people of Mecca at, at the beginning they tried to bribe him to bribe him by giving him money to give it to be uh, by wealth by women uh, by authority they tried to make any tem uh, different type of temptations that usually the mankind uh, de desires go through go to usually the desires of the mankind go to the wealth go to the children go to the woman go to the authority but Prophet Muhammad refused all these offers and when uh, they find themselves uh, they couldn't do any success in such a way they st started to go to his uncle Abu Talib and threatening him that he should prevent um, prevent his nephew from conveying his message and when Abu Talib his uncle tried to do that the, uh, the golden words the golden words said by Prophet Muhammad at that time and to see how much he was firm and he how much he was um, attached to his message and he didn't he didn't leave it or just throw it away for any desire or for any person even if he was the one beloved uncle that he raised him he told him oh my uncle if they place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left to force me to leave my message verily i wouldn't desist therefore until Allah made manifest his course his cause or I perished in the attempt so here he is telling uh, his uncle that he will never leave his message even if he, they put the sun in his right hand and the moon in his left hand until the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it uh, manifest and prevalent or he will lose his life but 
he sh even if he loses his life, this is uh, for him is it's not a big deal because it uh, be it will be for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So how much he was very firm in this and taking this decision, and how much that uh, all the people were against him at that time. All the people were against him, except, of course, that the, the weak believers with him, he, with him, they were not having the power enough. They were all just uh, not, not having the strength enough when they were in Mecca. But all the other believers were against him. And although that he, subhanAllah, became firm more and steadfast more and asked from the firm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Mateen to help him and support him. And this has happened. This has happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, supported and helped him. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك الله بحمدك لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك.